Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Mikhail Fistel from Ruhr University Bochum, Germany. And uh, I am scientific coordinator of a workshop, uh, international workshop, Super Galax. Uh, this workshop means, uh, uh, is devoted to two extremely challenging fields, searching for galactic axions and superconducting devices with quantum efficiency. Uh, this workshop was planned for next week uh, offline, but unfortunately, due to um, COVID-19, uh, COVID it was postponed to next year. But uh, uh, Institute of Basic Science and uh, um, Center of Physics of Complex Systems kindly provided the uh, platform for four talks, a series of four talks uh, devoted to this subject. Uh, uh, these talks will be organized in four consecutive weeks at Tuesday at uh, 5 p.m. Uh, Korean time. Korean time. Today, it was the uh, first talk in this series. Uh, and um, before we will start uh, this uh, talk with uh, Dr. Claudio Gatti, we, uh, mm, I give a floor to uh, Dr. Mikhail Lisitsky, who will uh, introduce a speaker and also say a few words about uh, European project um, connected with this field. Uh, that's all. And right now, the Mikhail Lisiski gives some announcement about this. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Good morning. Uh, I am Mikhail Lisitsky, the researcher of the Institute for Superconductors, Oxide, and other innovative materials and devices, SPIN, of the National Research Council of Italy, CRM. I am the coordinator of the research project uh, funded from the European Union's Horizon 2020 uh, uh, FETOPEN Research and Innovation Program. The acronym of the, our project is SuperGalax. The project is devoted to the detection of single microwave photons with the collective quantum state established in the coherent network of interacting superconducting qubits for searching uh, ga galactic uh, axions. The construction of the SuperGalax project contains seven research groups from the three countries. United Kingdom, Germany, and Italy. Final experimental study of feasibility of the single microwave photons superconducting quantum networks detector will be done by the group of the National Laboratories of Frascati of the National Institute for uh, Nuclear Physics of Italy, INFN, in the quarks experiment. I'd like to the principal investigator of the group from the National Institute for Nuclear Physics of Italy and the first speaker of our seminar. Dr. Claudio Gatti is a senior researcher at National Laboratories of Frascati of the National Institute for Nuclear Physics of Italy. He has obtained the PhD in 2003 in Pisa University with a thesis on calm physics uh, with uh, the Chloe experiment at the Daphne Collauder in Flascati. Presently, Dr. Claudio Gatti is working on axion physics with the quarks experiment, searching up a new holoscope at National Laboratories of Rascati, and but uh, he, he, he participates in different projects for the development of quantum limited amplifiers and single microwave photon detectors. Besides Super, uh, Supergalax uh, European project, 
he's participating in a uh, uh, SIMP and uh, DART uh, WARTS uh, INFM projects. I should now like to call on Dr. Claudia Gatti for talk on the European experimental landscape of detect, uh, direct detection of axon dark matter. Thank you, Mikhail. Thank you for inviting me. So uh, the talk, uh, in this talk, I will try to give you an overview of the experimental situation, landscape of um, direct detection of axion dark matter in, uh, in Europe. So I will give you some um, basic properties, what we know about axions today, what are the axion experimental limits we have set in, in, in the last years, and uh, a few words about uh, non-dark matter experiments since axion uh, can be probed also in, uh, in, in other physical phenomena uh, other than dark matter. And then I will focus on uh, uh, the dark matter searches in Europe in particular. And uh, this uh, consists of several kinds of experiment, resonance searches with haloscopes or broad band searches, I, I will tell you about it, and also with the uh, uh, ma magnetic resonance searches. And finally, just a few words about um, project for signal amplification, as uh, Mikael had said also uh, with Supergalax for finding new device to uh, try to detect the small signal uh, due to axion interaction. So uh, first of all, axion properties. So we know that axion interact with gluons and um, and uh, from this interaction, when you have this uh, um, non-perturbative effect with the QCD, you, you have, do you see the pointer, sorry? No? Yes, we see, uh, Claudia, okay. we okay. see. Okay, thanks. Okay, so from the interaction of axion with, uh, with particle like eta and pi, the axion obtains a mass. So the first thing we want to know about a particle is if it, it exists, and what is its coupling and mass? So from, uh, from searching the axion in, uh, for instance, count decays, we, we, can, um, we can say that axion must be, uh, have, a, have a very light interaction with matter, with ordinary matter, and they are very light particles. This is what we have learned. So their interaction with matter can be expressed by uh, several different kind of uh, type of interaction. So for instance, the axion can induce an electric dipole moment in the nucleons. And this is also, this is a very interesting um, part of physics that is studied in different ways. And also the, the axion can interact with the spin of uh, nucleons and fermions. And finally, the axion interacts with photons, with electromagnetic field. And, uh, each one of these different kind of interaction is exploited in a different experiment, trying to find the axon, and I will tell you about that. So concerning the axon to photon-photon interaction, uh, the axon could decay, but if we put, if we just compute this diagram and we put inside the numbers we know about the axon coupling interaction, at least the limits we have set experimentally, what we know is that the, the, the axion lifetime is very long, long longer than the, than the universe. So we can assume that the, the, laxion, the, the axion is essentially a stable particle. So if it, if it was produced at some time in the early universe, so today the axion will be everywhere and they will be in our galaxy as dark matter. And this is, what I will discuss in this talk. So there are several limits we, we, we have put on axions and this come from different kinds of experiments. Usually we, we describe, you will see this kind of plot uh, several times in this talk. Usually what we do is we put uh, the coupling of axion to photon on this axis and the mass of the axion on this axis. Now, the axion we are looking for usually uh, are stays in this uh, yellow band, 
which is predicted from theory, which means simply that the, the coupling and the mass are proportional to each other. These other colored regions are different kind of experiment, and I will tell something about that. A laboratory experiment looking for axiom from the sun or limits from astrophysics. Okay, and these these light green lines are uh, axiom dark matter searches, which are essentially the experiment that have the sensitivity with resonant experiment to reach the, the axiom band. Okay, just a few words about non dark matter experiments in Europe. This essentially exploit the, the possibility to have a conversion of a photon into an axion inside a magnetic field. And uh, if, if we have a photon propagating in, in a region when, where there is a magnetic field, the photon can convert in several points and we can have a coherent uh, uh, generation of this axion that really enhances the probability. This effect is, uh, is used, for instance, in laboratory experiment, wh where we have uh, we put we try to uh, convert a photon using a Fabry-Perot cavity inside a, a dipole magnet. We try to convert a photon to an axion, and then in a second cavity inside a second magnet, we we try to convert back the axion to a photon. These are called light shining through experiment, and the largest one will be. Alps do that will be running in the next years in a DAISY laboratory in Hamburg, Germany. The other kind of experiment is uh, an helioscope that looks for axion produced in the sun. And they try to do the opposite. They try to convert inside a magnetic field the axion into a photon and then detect a key B photon. Okay, the larger experiment today was cast at CERN that was using a dipole magnet from uh, LHC. And, uh, but the largest project will be YAXO that will follow a prototype, a baby YAXO. Also, this project will be done in DAISY laboratory in Hamburg. So finally, there are other possible searches for instance, just trying to detect a variation of the polarization of laser traveling in a magnetic field. This is used by the PVLAS experiment in Italy. And the other one is try to use, uh, uh, try to detect the fifth force due to the exchange of axion between matter. And uh, this, for instance, in Europe is done by the Quarks GPGS experiment. Okay, but le let me go to uh, the, the the, the real uh, item of this talk that is the search for dark matter. So we assume there is a dark matter with a given density and a given speed in our galaxy. And um, if this is due to axion, we can assume that we have a, like a classical field uh, oscillating in our ax in our galaxy. So what we try to do is try to detect the oscillation of this field in our experiments. So the, the most popular, uh, one of the first experiments was uh, to do resonance searches. This was done uh, with, uh, thanks to an idea of uh, Pierre Sikivi, the holoscope. It is essentially a resonant cavity put inside a magnet. So again, the, the magnetic field act as a, um, as a way to convert the axion into a photon. So in this case, in this case to um, a cavity mode excitation. So if you just solve the uh, Maxwell equation with the, with the presence of axions, you end up with a, with a source term due to the axion to the, to the electric field, so to the cavity mode. And you can compute the power they, that you can produce in your cavity. This experiment, are done inside a resonant cavity. So a resonant experiment, they, they are very sensitive because they are boosted by the quality factor of the cavity, but they just can probe a small line in, uh, in, in frequency and so in mass of the axion. And uh, so what you have to do, do then is to change the frequency and like with a radio looking for a station. 
so in uh, in Europe, there is one experiment uh, doing like a classical CKV uh, holoscope that is Quax in Italy by I IMFM. And uh, Quax uh, has a cavity inside a magnetic field, but also is trying to exploit this uh, other term is the interaction of uh, uh, axion with the spin of electrons. So in this uh, second, um, we, we call the first one quax A gamma and the second one quax axion electron. In this case, we put a, a paramagnetic material, material with a high density of electron spins inside the, the cavity. And if you have an axion wind, you can put in oscillation this, the spins of the electron and induce a, a, an excitation inside the resonance. So the first result of quax uh, axion electron was uh, done a couple of years ago. And uh, you, you see the, the limit put here. This is the capping of axion to electron. And this is the axion mass. And we were looking the region around 58 microelectron volt. This corresponds to a cavity of about 10 gigahertz, 14 gigahertz cavity. You, you see here the picture and inside you see this, this post here, they, they hold small balls of uh, egg material. So it, it's a material with a high density of electron spins. And this was the first proof of, proof of principle of ferromagnetic axion allosphere. Then we, we, we move to the axion photon uh, uh, interaction and uh, we, we operated essentially the same kind of, uh, of detector, working in at uh, four Kelvin in a cryostat with a magnetic field of only two Tesla. But then here we were using a new kind of uh, resonant cavity, uh, sputter with the niobium titanium. This was done because of the, uh, as I said, the signal of the axion is boosted by the quality factor of the cavity. In principle, we could use uh, um, superconducting cavities, but these kind of cavities have to operate inside a strong magnetic field, which usually, usually destroys, let's think about niobium, destroys the superconductivity. So operating with this uh, new kind of cavity, niobium titanium, we demonstrated that we could uh, work up to at least five Tesla magnetic field. And with this setup, a very simple setup, we, we put our first line in this uh, axion uh, limit plane, okay? Putting just a first line here. Last year, or yeah, okay, this year we published a new result with the, for the quax electron axion experiment. Just this time we moved to a dilution refrigerator. So going below 100 millikelvin and uh, you using much more uh, um, X spheres up to 10 spheres. And uh, okay, in this case with a copper cavity and we put, and we did a scan instead of just a single line, we did a scan improving by more than uh, an order of factor, our previous limit on the quax axion electron um, capping. And uh, right now we are writing the paper concerning the axion photon uh, uh, coupling, again in a dilution refrigerator with an eight Tesla magnet inside a, a 20 centimeter cavity at 10 gigahertz. And this is the limit the paper will be soon on archive, it's almost ready. And uh, this time we reached the bend of the axion. So, we can say that uh, we, we ended our R&D with the quax, and now it's a mature experiment and we can start the, the scan in, in a couple of years of, uh, of the axion search in the region around 40 microlectron. Micro uh, as I say, we, we did a lot of R&D on uh, cavities, trying to develop cavities working inside magnetic field with a high quality factor so we, we published a paper with a photonic band gap cavity, you can see here, where the, the mode, the electromagnetic mode is holded by the dielectric material. 
And also this one in which we read almost a million quality factor. It's uh, one, our last paper, this uh, cavity done with a uh, hollow dielectric cylinders, two cylinders holding inside the, the cavity model with, with very few losses. So we just presented to INFN our plan for the next five years. We are going to build a two haloscopes, one in Frascati and one in uh, Legnaro in the north of Italy. We will have a couple of years for uh, assembly of the haloscope and then we will take data from 2023 to 2025. And uh, we plan to scan a region of about two, three, gigahertz, around 10 gigahertz uh, frequency of the axiom. So do you see this is the laboratory in uh, Frascati and this one is the laboratory in Legnaro. Okay, but let's see other proposals and experiment. Also in Frascati, we have a very large magnet to, do, to the, the claw experiment. You can see the picture here. So what we did was to propose a very large uh, haloscope probably the largest in the world, with a huge cavity, 22 uh, cubic meter in volume. And uh, this experiment is called CLASH. Right now it's only a proposal. There is also a problem with the magnet that probably will, go, will move to um, United States for the Dune experiment. But we have a second magnet in Frascati, is the Finuda magnet, quite similar. So we we are planning to use this one. And um, with this larger, since the, the, the frequency of the axion, so its mass is fixed by the, uh, the diameter of the cavity. In this case, we can probe very, instead of going to gigahertz, we can probe megahertz frequencies. And so this region of masses for the axion. So this is still a proposal. So we don't know really if we are going to run. But one experiment that is uh, running and is going to run is uh, RAIDS or RADAS that is designed to, to work inside a helioscope. So I told you about the, the cast experiment looking for axion from the sun. The idea is to, they have a very, this huge magnet, it's a, a LHC dipole, very long, nine meters with a strong magnetic field. So the, the idea is to, uh, find a, a kind of cavity, resonant cavity, that can be so long, nine, up to nine meters, to operate inside this kind of magnet. And this is the, the, is the idea of this, uh, the people of RAIDS, and they design 8.5 gigahertz uh, uh, arrays uh, of cavities, like a filter, and uh, they can engineer the, the shape of the cavity and the coupling between the different cavities, so to, to have the, the, the best coupling be, between the modes of the cavity and the axion field. And uh, they, they have built uh, a cavity up to one meter, so you can see the picture here, very nice. And uh, they, they plan to, to um, take data inside the cast magnet in the next years with a one, this one meter cavity and put the brown, the brown line here. But then they, they also plan to arrive up to nine meter cavity. And so to do one of these uh, long line, I think it's this one, this, and, and reach the bend of the QCD axion. And then for the future, they want to join the YAXO, pro the Yaxo project and uh, from 2023, maybe, uh, run inside the baby YAXO detector and, and probe still this region around 30 micro electron volts. So, but beside these uh, um, resonance searches, which, which are very sensitive, but it takes very long to take data and you have to tune your device. Uh, in, the, in the last years, the, there was a lot of discussion about uh, broadband searches. So experiment able to, 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 to probe larger fraction of, of the frequency region in, at a single time. So the, the, the main idea on, on um, 
on this broadband search is not to use a resonant cavity, which is resonant by definition, but to use a different kind of uh, um, principle. This is uh, uh, explained by, by this picture here. And uh, they say what happens if you have a, a region with a high uh, dielectric constant material and then vacuum. Now, if, if you have a magnetic field and, and an axion field, you are supposed to generate uh, oscillating electric field on both part of, of the, both in the, in the dielectric and in vacuum. However, at the boundary of the vacuum with the, the dielectric, the electric field must be must have a boundary condition which hold also in presence of axion. So if you apply the boundary condition, it ends up that you must have an electromagnetic wave propagating, reflecting, if you want, on the, on the, on the boundary of the material with vacuum. So with this idea, the first experiment proposed was this uh, brass at Munich, at um, Hamburg, again, Hamburg University and DAISY. And um, what they do, they say, we, we can build a plane of, um, with a magnetic material, with a magnetic field up to, a magnet with a magnetic field up to one Tesla. And at the boundary of this material, we must have a production of electromagnetic wave, which we can concentrate by using a reflecting mirror. And then at the focus of, a, of this mirror, we can put our receiver and detect axion. So they are doing to, um, they're almost ready to take data with a prototype of this experiment called BRAS. And uh, you see in our plot with the coupling and mass, they plan to probe this region between uh, uh, its uh, 30, 18 to 32 gigahertz, so around 100 microelectron volt. And in the future, if, if, if they can build a bigger mirror and a bigger magnetic field region, they plan to reach the QCD band, and you see in this plot here. So this is a very nice idea, and they will take data soon. So the, the next step is say, okay, we just don't put one single uh, surface, boundary surface, but we put many. Hmm? We put many and uh, with a mirror. And this was the, is the idea of MetMax. This is also a large collaboration with many institutions and it will be located at DAISY. And uh, they, they proved that they can, uh, essentially the, the power they can produce is proportional to this boost factor. We take into account the number of, uh, of disk, of dielectric disk they use uh, and uh, their dimension, distance and so on. And so they, they say they can have a very large band and, uh, but a, a large boost factor due to the number of disks. So they lose, if you want, in quality factor by the gain because of the large area of the disks and because of the large number. Mm -hmm. So with this kind of object, they can reach the, the QCD band and you can see the, the prediction they expect to reach in uh, three, five years, the, the, the QCD region and exclude the region between 30 and 40 uh, gigahertz. So here you see the, the design of the experiment. There are up to 80 dielectric disks they are adjustable, so you can tune the frequency. And there is a mirror concentrating the, the power, the electromagnetic power produced by the, the axion field on these uh, on this, uh, on this disks inside the, the um, a horn antenna and a device. And around this, there is a dipole magnet with nine Tesla, because again, the, the, is the magnetic field that converts the axion to uh, <clears throat> photon, if you want. So the, there is already a, a, a very interesting R&D going on. This one is in Munich. They built a, a small proof of principle setup with uh, five dielectric 
um, sapphire disc of a 20 centimeter diameter, and then they have a copper mirror and a horn antenna. What, what they proved is that you can use um, the reflection, the reflected signal from this disc, because one of the problem is uh, how, how do we know that the system is working, the system is well tuned, right? Because the action, is, it's hard to see. So they proved that we're just measuring the reflected signal from, from um, the disc that they call the booster. You can, uh, let's say, measure the, the quality factor and the, and the resonant frequency of the system. And so you can make prediction on the, on the alignment on, and on the quality of your uh, experimental setup. So this was very nice. But now they, they are constructing a prototype that will be put at, uh, at CERN inside the Morpurgo magnet. It's a magnet of up to 1.6 Tesla and one meter long. You see a design here of the setup. We'll have about uh, up to 20 disks of a 30 centimeter diameter. And this one will take data in, in the next few years. After that, they, they will start the construction of the final detector. You see the design here that will be hosted at DAISY and will take data probably after uh, 2030. Okay, the, the last type of experiment I'm going to talk about is this uh, nuclear magnetic resonance experiment. This is very, very interesting. There is a group essentially in Mainz, Germany, and uh, together with the uh, American University. And uh, wh what they do, they, they exploit the, these two different couplings. The first one is the direct coupling of axion to gluons. And they, they want to exploit the fact that the, the presence of an axion oscillation induces in, um, in, in nucleons the, uh, an, electric dipole, an electric dipole moment. So this can be uh, probed with a um, kind of magnetic resonance experiment. The, the other kind of coupling they want to uh, test is similar to the quark's uh, axion electron. They, they exploit the, the coupling of the axion to the um, fermion spin. In this, in this case, the fermion composing the nuclear material. And again, with a nuclear man a magnetic resonance experiment, they try to put, uh, uh, they try to see if the axion is uh, uh, putting in oscillation the, the, the spin of, of the nucleus. And they are already taking data. In the, the United States, they, they are taking data with a Casper uh, electric dipole experiment. While in Europe, they, they are testing this uh, Casper wind uh, interaction. So the, the, the flipping of the nuclear materials spin um, due to the axiom. And uh, they published the, previous, um, the result in a very low mass region. This is very, very, because here we are talking about magnetic resonance. So we talk about frequencies which go from tens, hundred megahertz to Perhaps. Okay, so, and they, uh, depending on the kind of uh, magnetic field they put, they can probe different frequencies. So the very ultra low uh, field at low frequency already gave some result and they are uh, setting up the, the experiment probably, probably will start the experiment soon in the, in the, in the other region with the low field and high field uh, experiments. So uh, combining all this uh, information, uh, I tried to uh, a tentative uh, timeline of uh, UX experiments, just to give you an idea of, of how exciting will be uh, the next 10 years. Um, so we, we have quarks, which is uh, right now taking some data in, uh, in Legnaro, but from 2023, we will be taking data in Frascati and Legnaro for three years at least. 
The RAIDS project is taking data with CAS, and after 2023, we take data with Baby Yaks. The BRAS project with the prototype is a BRAS 6, is uh, going to take data probably right now. And, uh, and who knows in the future if, 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 if they will make it to build the, the larger uh, detector. Casper, I've shown you the preliminary, the, the result already published in the ultra low field region. And uh, they are preparing almost ready with the uh, uh, low field and high field. So they will be taking data also in the, in the next few years. MedMax, the, the prototype will be taking data at CERN inside the Morpurgo uh, magnet. And uh, after 2030, probably the, the full detector will be operating in DAISY. And for Clash, uh, is still in a proposal uh, situation. So who knows? Maybe after Quarks, we will, we will do the experiment. We are still discussing about it. So let me just now say a few words in project I'm involved uh, for the signal amplification or signal detection due to, to Axion. These are very, very tiny power. We talk about 10 to the minus 24 Watt as a power. So it's very tiny. And um, something we are working right now also with a project that is called Dart Wars that is detector array redial with traveling wave amplifiers. It is, uh, was just approved this year by, the, by uh, INFM. And uh, to use, uh, is to use this uh, traveling wave Josephson parametric amplifier. So uh, in present experiment, we, what we did use was a Josephson parametric amplifier, we, which has a resonator are super conductive, so there is no dissipation, and uh, they just add the, the, um, the minimum noise required by quantum mechanics. The problem of uh, Jordison parametric amplifi amplifiers is that they are very narrow band. So for an experiment like WAX, you are, you are supposed to change uh, 10 of them in one year. Traveling wave is a different concept. You don't have a resonator, but you have a, you have a um, transmission line in which you have an amplification as shown in this picture, in which you have a pump signal and a signal. And as the two signal travel together, the pump signal uh, transfer energy, energy to, to the signal amplifying it. So you have a small signal in input and you are supposed to have a larger signal in output. The Nell Institute in France, they, they developed uh, uh, one of these the devices is in this paper here is a four wave mixing device and people in Legnaro from Quaxa are uh, re recently started a collaboration to test them for the Quax experiment. You see how this, um, device have a, have a, has a very large band because it's no resonance. So it's from five to eight uh, gigahertz and there's an amplification of up to 20 dB. The other design we are working on is this uh, three wave mixing from uh, Zorin in a PTB. And it's a three wave mixing is a different design. We are working with Inrim producing them and uh, also within the Super Galax project. And, uh, and okay, but we are still at the beginning, we don't have a result of it. The, the other project, as Mikhail said uh, at the beginning of the talk is uh, Super Galax in which we are involved as INFN. So the idea is to have this uh, uh, very sensitive device in which we explore the fact that uh, um, many qubits they, they, they form a kind of metamaterial which is sensitive to, to the signal and not sensitive to noise. I mean, the more qubits you have, you are supposed to be less sensitive to noise of the single qubit. And this will be, will be put inside a, a device with a resonant cavity to infrascati. And in principle, just doing a spectroscopic measurement of, of the cavities or, or, or the signal of the device lines, we can detect if there is a, a axion excitation in, in, the, in the cavity or not. 
Finally, let me say about one last project we have in, uh, in Italy, which is the SIMP, is a single uh, microwave photon detection, is an INFM project we, we, have, we, we have with uh, CNR in Italy, also in RIM. And uh, recently we published with, with the, this paper with a very sensitive um, device done with a nanowire test, transition edge sensor. And this is a very small, the transverse, uh, the dimension is uh, 100 nanometer in width and uh, 20 nanometer in uh, thickness and uh, about one micron in, in length. And these are very small uh, thermal capacity and, and small conductance. So um, we measure the, um, the, the transition curve, which is the resistance as a function of the temperature of the bath. And you see that we, we reach uh, millikelvin, um, 100 millikelvin uh, uh, transition temperature of the device. This means that a very uh, small energy, like 100 gigahertz photon, can give uh, uh, an increase of, a, of a thermal uh, uh, energy of temperature of the device to have a transit and uh, give a transition of the device that is measurable because it's a, it's a resistance get, that goes from uh, zero to about 50 ohm. Okay, so uh, this is a very nice result we obtain in, uh, in Italy. Uh, and, and that's it. So thank you. It's a very exciting period, both for uh, R&D on devices and experiment. And OK, and I hope to be in Korea next year. OK, thank you very much, uh, Claudio, for this uh, very uh, nice and interesting overview on uh, what happens in action physics, in particular in Europe. And uh, we should uh, also clap our hands. So let me just try right now. Thank you very much. And the talk is now open for some uh, further questions, comments. Everyone uh, can just either raise hands or uh, on the Zoom or just unmute. And uh, we will try to control the flow if there's uh, any any problems? Let me maybe just uh, uh, start with one question. You you describe very in very in, in much detail uh, the programs which are currently running in Europe. Uh, what about how do they compare to the programs uh, which are running in uh, uh, America and also in Asia? Yeah. So the, there is a there are. Uh, there are many experiments, many new experiments and uh, ideas coming out in the uh, United States and uh, in Asia. And uh, clearly one of our main competitors uh, in, um, is, in, um, is in Korea, in South Korea, and uh, is the CAP Institute led by Yannis. And, uh, but luckily, luckily we have many frequency to, to probe so, <laughs> so we go really, we can still collaborate on, on project and, and uh, we are glad to do that. And because of that, there is a large region of um, a mass region that should be probed uh, for axion searches. And, uh, and with these resonant techniques, it takes very long just to make a small region. So, in principle, it's like a large collaboration with many experiments looking for some free frequency region, if you want. The, the thing will change with the broadband searches like MedMax, which will be able to probe very, very large regions of, of the parameter space. So uh, luckily they will come later than our experiments, but uh, it will be interesting. And um, so maybe in, in, in 10 years, we, we will also join this kind of experiment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, other questions? Mikhail, you, you unmuted yourself. Do you? Ah, I have a question and uh, 
thanks for example uh, for this talk but uh, i have general question you mentioned about uh, uh, some action uh, from non -da, uh, dark matter experiment and another is dark matter actually how you can distinguish and how people can distinguish between two different types of axions and uh, yes this, uh, yeah question. well um but first of all is the kind of detector you use but uh, i just give you a simple example is uh, let me go back to the Too fast. Okay. So, for, for instance, okay, the, the axiom, uh, we think there is one axiom, okay? We don't know exactly its properties. We expect that if an axiom is produced, uh, it's, it's really, um, the theoreticians say that most probably it will produce dark matter in the universe. But this one, this may be not true. Something that, however, may be, uh, we can expect is the production of axion in uh, stars. Okay, because if you have this particle and this particle interact with, uh, with matter, it should be produced inside, inside stars. Okay, so for instance, from the sun. Now, so what, what, one, one thing you can do is try to do, to look at the sun with a particular detector, like this one I've shown, that is a, again, is a magnet, and try to detect the axion from the sun. Uh, the point is that, uh, okay, so in principle, if you, if you see axion when you're pointing, it's like a telescope. If you see axion when you're pointing to the sun and then you point somewhere else, uh, you are sure the axion are coming from the sun. This, this can be an answer to your question, okay? Mm -hmm. The point uh, then is uh, what happens if I, if I see axion from the sun? Uh, what kind of axion are they? Are they the same of the QCD axion or are they other kind of... Uh, particles that we usually call the axion-like particles. And that is something that uh, cannot be answered easily with a single uh, experiment. Uh, and so in, in this case, mm -hmm. you have to do, you, you can see in this plane, the, the, um, this kind of experiment are not sensitive to the mass of the particle. So, so you, if you observe a signal, it can be a heavier particle in agreement with the QCD axiom model, or can be a very light particle, not in agreement with the QCD axiom model, but there's no way to, uh, to obtain the mass from this. Mm. Something you can do is you can try to probe different kind of coupling of the particles. So from the kind of, if you observe a spectra of axion energies, what were uh, of photons coming from an axion conversion, mm -hmm. what you can try to understand if that uh, spectra is due to the axion electron interaction or axion uh, charge interaction, mm -hmm. nuclear interaction, okay, different kind of uh, uh, interactions, okay. So you can say something about the coupling, and that is something. One example was uh, there is this uh, Xenon experiment uh, they recently gave, uh, um, they observed an excess of events in their data and they one of the hypotheses was the, the axion coming from the sun. Mm -hmm. But in this case, uh, if, if this is true, the axion coupling to, to electron would be so large that the sun would be already uh, mm -hmm. a, a dead star, not, not anymore shining, okay? Mm -hmm. So there are things you, you, you can say about the, the the, the power of signal you observe and maybe on the kind of spectrum you, you... clearly if, if you observe a signal somewhere then you will try to devise many kind of experiment to to try to understand which coupling and which mass and so on and and, it, and that will help you to understand which kind of particle you are looking, you're looking to but uh, still uh, 
Thank you. But uh, still, uh, range of frequency is practically which uh, scientists to look. Uh, it's similar uh, range of frequencies. Is around uh, gigahertz or the or the much larger frequency. Okay. Uh, yeah. In principle, there, 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 there is not a given frequency. You can go from hertz, like in the Casper experiment, uh, mm -hmm. up to terahertz if you want. So there is a no. We we know that in the for higher energy energies. Uh, there are limits from uh, accelerators or from uh, astrophysical observation, so the, the axiom must be larger. So below the, below the mm, milli electron volt, if you want. Okay, okay. but then there are, there is no real limit on that. Mm -hmm. You can say that if the axiom composes the dark matter, the most motivated region is in the microelectron volt uh, mass which means a frequency around uh, 10 gigahertz, 10, 20, 30 gigahertz, five, okay? That's, that's what you can say from uh, uh, cosmological evolution, okay? From what you know about the universe. But, but then you don't know. I mean, there are many uncertainties. This is just a theoretical guess, well-educated guess, but uh, those are guess. And then maybe you, you have axioms which are not exactly QCD axioms. So the, the, there are uh, preferred regions by, th by theory, and, but there are still uh, room for other possibilities. Thank you. Yeah, I think there was a question by Alexei Ustinov. Uh, yes, I would like to ask Claudio a question uh, concerning the last uh, uh, experiment you mentioned uh, with nanowire. Yeah. I'm wondering, um, first, what kind of material do you use for a nanowire? And second, uh, can you reach in this experiment single photon sensitivity at 100 gigahertz? Yeah, well, first of all, we, we only did, uh, um, well, Francesco Giazzotto in Pisa did uh, um, DC measurement. So, characterization of the device in, uh, in DC. So not yet with the radio frequency. Uh, we are planning to do it in the coming months and we had some problem as everybody else in this period uh, <laughs> trying to produce the devices. But we are soon doing the test, uh, reading the device with a squid uh, and, uh, and then with uh, testing it with the radio frequency. So this will come next year, is in the project uh, um, timeline next year. Uh, this kind of material, what, what you're trying to do is, is to go from the Kelvin critical temperature of, uh, of the aluminum down to uh, 100 millikelvin or even less. The, the original plan was to reach uh, the 50 millikelvin temperature, but 100 millikelvin is already fine. And uh, what you do, you just put a normal metal with uh, like copper uh, with, uh, with aluminum. You, so you have a um, double layer of materials. And they, the proximity effect of the, of the copper electron in the aluminum just destroy the superconductivity and lower and lower the, the critical temperature. The, the only thing you, you must be careful in doing this is to keep uh, a steep, a steep transition of of the um, of the of the resistance co curve as a function of temperature, and this uh, not only when you do the film, but also when you go from the film to to the nanowire. And um, one of the things that uh, they did at uh, Nest in Pisa is to use this large part of um, aluminum wire. Okay in which uh, you have a larger gap for, for, uh, for the superconductor. And so you have a kind of a, the, the so-called uh, undrive mirror, mm -hmm. which uh, like um, constrain the uh, excited electron to stay inside the nanowire. Mm -hmm. So that, that you have, the, the, so that you don't just lose the, 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 the temperature, you, your photon transfer to the device uh, to, to the rest of the, uh, so just to have, a, if you want, a small uh, thermal capacitance of the nanowire. Okay, so this is- Okay, thank you. Yanis uh, Semertidis had a 
question it yes. and then is some who in next one but first uh, I, I want yeah. to make a comment there this is claudia this was an amazing talk thank you very much a brilliant overview of the eu activities uh, on axiom uh, i mean really good i'd like your slides too um the i want to make a comment about us we are working currently between one and uh, six gigahertz, six to 10 is our next target. Uh, and uh, ADMX, the Americans are working below one gigahertz, but they are marching um, towards our frequencies. And of course, uh, Haystack, uh, the high frequencies around six. Uh, so these, these curtains are a little movable uh, and uh, will give uh, a little competition, but also we collaborate. We collaborate with Claudio on a lot of the technical uh, uh, things we want to develop. And uh, that's a good thing because we are all uh, scientists and we want to find out if axions are the dark matter. So, uh, and uh, I want to thank Sergei Flach for organizing and uh, Mikhail Fistul and uh, Mikhail Lichinsky for organizing this meeting, because the idea is uh, to understand um, axions is a big thing in, in, uh, in the, it's a physics question today. And we are going to get there. Uh, CAPP is going to get down all the way down to DFSZ sensitivities for our frequencies. That we promise you. So, and we promise to work together so that we can all achieve our goals. Thank you again, Claudio, for doing such a great job today. Thank you, Yanis. Uh, uh, thank you, Yanis, uh, for this uh, nice uh, comment and contribution. So we have a question probably from Sang Hui Im. Please unmute yourself. Oh, here we go. Oh, thank you very much for the talk. So I have a somewhat specific question. So concerning the Quark's AE experiment, you show that the recent uh, experimental result exclude the GAE larger than about 10 to the minus 11, but it's still uh, less competitive to the astrophysical bound. So my question is, what, may I have an idea on the ultimate projected sensitivity of the Quark's AE experiment on axon electron coupling? Yeah, yeah, good, good, good question. The, the GAE uh, uh, coupling is, uh, it's a very hard experiment. So uh, we did the first uh, proof of, print, of a principal experiment and then there's a new result, but we are still order of magnitude far from the QCT band. And we can try to, one of the limit is the, is the let's say the quality factor of this, uh, the EG. So while inside a resonant cavity, you can have a, a, a time, no? a typical time of 10 microseconds for accumulating the, the, the oscillation energy of the axion. Uh, when you have these uh, spins, uh, you, you have a lot of losses. And, and at the end, your uh, typical time, so if you want a quality factor, is order of 0.1 microseconds. So this is one of the limit is not is uh, there are uh, ideas and something has been understood in uh, impurities inside this material that generate losses. And so uh, we are trying the people in Legnaro and Padua, they are following this uh, research. They are uh, trying to have um, purer, uh, purest material for doing this kind of experiment. So increase this number and uh, enhance the, the, the resonance of, of the, the resonance effect. The, the other point is, it is try to put more, more, uh, more of these spheres. So we went from uh, a few to, to 10. In principle, we can make it longer. We can use more cavities. We can, no, we can make arrays of cavities. Uh, uh, read by, uh, for instance, a traveling wave, maybe amplifier with uh, different frequencies. But then the, the, well, you can do improvements, okay? But the real improvement will be the single photon counter. 
this case. We, we, we know that if we, if we have a single photon counter, something that similar, for instance, to what was done by Nakamura in Japan, they, they, they studied this kind of system, this uh, Magnon system, and they, what they did is to, to take a um, copper cavity with a, with a Higgs sphere inside, coupled strongly to, to, the, to the cavity mode. And uh, in this, inside the same cavity, a qubit uh, dispersively coupled. So at, the, at a different frequency inside the cavity. And they were able to, to have this very uh, sensitive uh, magnum detector. Uh, and uh, that would be also a prototype of a single photon detector for a magnon excitation inside a Higgs sphere. And that would probably, yeah, I know, we know with that kind of, uh, of setup we, or, or with the with super galaxy device also, we, we, we would be able to reach the QCD band. Without the single photon detector, it's, uh, it's kind of hard. I see, thank you. Okay, uh, are there any other questions from the audience? It uh, doesn't seem to be... Uh, oh, there's uh, Mikhail Lisitsky, please go ahead. You're on mute. <clears throat> First of all, I, I would like to, uh, to tell, uh, thank you very much uh, to Claudia for the very nice, uh, very nice presentation. And uh, I have... Uh, uh, two questions. Uh, one question is about the mm, uh, LLSCOPE. Uh, 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 was the LLSCOPE uh, uh, really realized experimentally, or uh, this is only the idea? Helioscope? Yes, hel I'm so, speaking yeah, about Sure, sure. No, since uh, many years. The first were, were done in the uh, United States and uh, BNL and uh, in Japan, Sumiko. And, uh, and today there is this uh, CAST, which is a CERN Axion uh, Solar Telescope mm -hmm. running uh, at CERN. And uh, yeah, then the next proposal is this uh, YAXO, which is a larger uh, telescope uh, with uh, the, the prototype is a uh, baby YAXO is going to be built in a few years in, uh, in DESI. So they, they are running, they set, uh, you see in this picture, the limit set by CAST, that was up to now the, the best experiment in this field. There is a, also a Russian experiment called TASTE, uh, that was just proposed a few years ago to, to something like baby yak. So you can see from the parameters that sensitivity. Okay, and what about the X-ray detectors? What type of X-ray detectors um, uh, yeah. is used in this experiment? Yeah, the, the, the one they're using, they try different detector, but the one, the best they have used is gas detector, because in this case, you have um, the temperature of, of, the, of the sun is such that you have a key V photons. And so when you're from key V photons, you produce uh, axion, you produce key V axion, and when they are back converted to, to photons, you still have a key V photon. So if you if you take a gap of a three centimeter of gas, like in, in a gas chamber, a wire chamber, you have a you have a very efficient conversion of a of a photon to electrons and so on. So the, what and they do they, is use a micro megas. Uh, uh, which, which is a, a detector with um, strips, copper strips on a plane and, and gas and um, an amplification region. They are used also in particle physics experiments. And At last, uh, and my last question is, uh, is as follows. Uh, uh, in, uh, in our uh, Super Galaxy project, uh, we are uh, trying to investigate the application of qubits uh, devices for, uh, uh, for uh, detection of single photons uh, in microwave range. You told about them, uh, uh, you told about the uh, nanowires test uh, detectors. And uh, can you uh, can you give some words about the uh, semiconductor detectors in the application for the single photon detectors? 
Oh, I'm, I'm not uh, really an expert. Uh, there are uh, quantum dots uh, detectors uh, also done in Italy, in, in Pisa and uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, also in the north of Italy. And uh, usually what, what they do in, uh, they have this um, like uh, uh, combined quantum dots, which are really sensitive. When they get excited, they, they stay charged for a long time, up to milliseconds. And, and this extra charge inside the quantum dots can, for instance, open the gate of a single electron transistor. So you can couple, couple two systems with quantum dots. One is connected to an antenna, which is a, and the quantum dots is excited. And, uh, and one, once the quantum dots is excited, it opens the, the channel inside the transistor, a single electron transistor. And, these are very interesting detectors. Uh, that there are uh, usually they are used at higher frequencies, but there are plans also to go to the gigahertz. I'm not really an expert, but there is a Tredicucci working on this in Pisa, and there is a in uh, Unimore um, our friend and collaborator. I don't remember the name. Um, Affront, okay. Marco Affront. No, okay. Okay, uh, thank you for your answers and uh, thank you again for your nice uh, presentation. Thank you. Okay, uh, let me ask uh, whether there are further questions or comments from the audience. It uh, doesn't seem to be the case. Well, I think this was a very uh, excellent first uh, uh, seminar lecture uh, on this topic of uh, uh, axions and uh, thank you very much again to Claudio Gatti for this wonderful Good talk time. and uh, we are looking forward and thank you to both Mikhail and Mikhail, uh, Fistul and Lisitsky I mean and uh, we are looking forward to uh, the next uh, talks in this uh, small series uh, which will help us to bridge uh, uh, the hard COVID times and hopefully see you next year in person in our uh, institute here in uh, Korea. So then uh, with that, I guess we can release you all back into your uh, other life duties. Thank you very much again. And the meeting then uh, is coming to an end right now. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you. Bye, bye everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you very much. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Thank you, bye.